and welcome to the fourth in this series of workflow guides which we are putting together to help Faro customers get the most out of their laser scan data. In this particular workflow guide we are going to look at using Faro scan data for creating site topographic deliverables in a variety of third party packages. For ease of reference this workflow guide has been broken down into two separate videos. Firstly, we're going to look at creating some subsampled scan data sets within Scene for XYZ and CSV export. We will then take these files and bring them into Revit 2015 and Archicad 18 to create some topographic surfaces. I'll then go through some basic topographical functions within Scene using the Surveyor app and we'll look at creating some 3D and 2D line work and spot levels in AutoCAD 2015. We'll then quickly run over creating a mesh from Scandata within Civil 3D 2015 and finally we'll look at combining these topographical deliverables with point clouds within Revit. Okay so firstly in order to create some of these subsampled CSV files we're going to need the Surveyor app which is available on the Faro App Store by Rhythm 3D and it's available at the following web address. We're also going to need the Uniform Filter app um, which is going to help us to create some of our subsampled XYZ files. Okay, if we open up a scene now, I have four scans here of a level crossing, which we'll use in a, as an example. As you can see, there's quite a bit of noise from traffic and uh, surrounding buildings, which we'll need to get rid of if we're going to create a nice smooth surface. So we will actually need to use some clipping boxes and things to do this. However, I've actually already done this and created a project point cloud um, so that we can just run through quickly how to do the export. So if I load this predefined surface in, nicely cleaned, you can see I've got rid of most of the noise and taken away the buildings just for ease. So what I'm actually now going to do is just go to my tools menu and my apps and I'm just going to load in the Surveyor app to bring in the toolbar. I'm then just going to rotate this round and we'll just drop this into an orthographic view so that we can get some good pics of the areas. If I then just click on the button here to the second to the left which is the create subsampled set of points button it will allow me to specify grid spacing and in this instance I'll go with 500 millimeters. I'm then just going to go in and create an area now I can create the full area if I want to or I could possibly split this up into things like paths, roads or um, crossed areas and, so, and export these as separate files which we could all bring together in a separate package but for this instance I'm just going to go around the area and just create a, uh, a boundary around it. Once we've done that we just press return and we can save this out as a CSV file so I'm just going to type in here severe app test and press save I'll just, just pause this and restart it and you can see we've got the severe app test CSV file saved out if I just open this up now in Excel to show you the outputs you can see we've got three columns with XYZ values in them If you have a larger site and you are less concerned about breaking that larger site down into smaller areas, we also have the Uniform Filter app available which will allow you to export subsampled XYZ files. In this instance, as the app will only work on an individual scan file itself, there was a little bit of an export import process to go through in order to create an area we can use with the app. In this instance I have a large car park site and I've created a project point cloud and cleaned away a large number of the cars and other noise from the site. I then used a clip box to select a small area which is going to be the target for my export. My next step is going to be right clicking on the clip box in the structure tree to the left, selecting the import export function and using the export 3D selection using active clipping boxes feature. 
rather than saving this file out directly as an XYZ file, I'm actually going to save this out as an E57 file to a known location, which I'm then going to import into a new scene project. So I'll just press save here and export and I'll pause the video and restart it when I've got a new project open. So in my new project I go to the import menu and I just need to change the file setting to E57 files. Select the file and press open. An error message will appear just to tell us that a plain view and quick view will not be available. That's okay so we'll just click OK on that. So I'm just going to right click on my scan and open a 3D view just to have a look at this now. As you can see with E57 files there is a kind of patchwork effect to the scans it loads in. However it's not to worry because this all the scanned area is there. So if I now go to my tools menu and apps and I'll go down and activate my uniform filter app. Bring that in. Now if I did want to just quickly export this I could right click on the scan go down to save filtered copy of scans However, first I'm just going to go to the properties menu and I'm just going to check the scanner distance range for the maximum distance from the scanner because I'll need that in the export. So I'll just close that down, go back to my save filtered copy of scans and you can see I can now put that value into my maximum distance range. I can then set the resolution if I want and change that, which as you can see is appended on the end of the scan if you want it to be. Um, I'll just change that to 250mm there and you can see that's updated. I'll just go back and put 500 in here and as you can see you could export this as either an XYZ or an E57 so I will just go and set the location and export this out we can go and check the export location now to make sure that this file is exported correctly however there's a small step required before we bring this into either Revit or Archicad this particular file is going to be brought into Archicad so what I'm going to need to do is open this up in Excel and I'm going to have to change, slightly change the structure of the file. So you can probably see that when I come to import this file to Excel there are six columns. So the first three columns are the X, Y and Z data values and the last three columns will be the red, green and blue values, the scan points. As the data in the file is delimited by a space we can actually Excel to import this and separate it into columns using the space as a separator. I'm also going to ask Excel to skip the last three columns on the import, which can be done as shown. Okay, so when imported, we have these three columns with the XYZ values. However, I'm going to insert a new column to the left hand side because I want to create a numerical column here to define each particular row, which is going to be required for the Archicad import. So I'm just going to create this and drag it down to give each row a value and I'm going to click save. So when I do this Excel is then going to ask me do I want to preserve the features and to do this I need to click no. And I need to save out in a re more recent Excel format so I'll click no here and I'll save an Excel file. However when I go back to my export location I can just delete this file because I don't actually need it and the XYZ file has changed. Ok so let's have a look at some of this data inside Revit now. I'm going to open up my site layer and I'm going to go to the Mass and Insight tab and Top Surface. We have the option here to create from import so we could use a DWG or a points file here to create some kind of surface. So we're going to use obviously a specify a points file. I'm going to go and find the CSV file that we exported previously and I'm going to open that up. Now we must select meters for the export because that is the preset within Varro scene. So if we open it up we can see all the different points that have been used to create a surface. If we drop it into a 3D view however you can see there's a little bit of noisy data here that's been carried through so we need to clean that out. I think there's just another one just under here. So two stray points which we'll just get rid of. And once we're happy we'll just turn this around and we'll click the big green tick to say OK. Now we're going to just have to open up the site settings tab now to tweak the contours on this particular surface as it is particularly flat to give it a bit more definition. So if I just change the increment here to say 100mm and apply that you can see you start to 
define the surface a little bit better and if we put it to 50 and if I just move around here you can see the contours are showing the gentle increase towards the center of the level crossing along the road there. I can also now go and add in a spot elevation here and um, I could also add a spot coordinate if I wanted to so you can see that's just pointing to that specific location there and if I just drop this down into the site 2D layout I can do exactly the same thing just drop a spot coordinate in there you can actually get rid of the leader if you want to so the default material that is used on import into Revit is earth however one nice feature we have up in the modify site tab is the ability to go in and split the surface down into multiple materials so if I just select this tab here and select the surface I can now go on and split this down by drawing on an area and um, this would obviously be much better if we had a 2D plan to trace around and we will look at this in the next video in this series however just to give a basic idea if I just join that together you can see if I drop this into 3D view we now have a split section within this topographical surface and I can go in here and I could change this to any particular surface I wanted so let's call this asphalt and there we are you can see we've got an area which is representing our road I just want to open up an example here just to show what can be achieved with a slightly larger site so this is a demolition site so what you can see are essentially piles of rubble on a sloping site if we open up the 2d view you can see that the areas are quite well defined using this method and using the contours so if we open up the site settings tab we can tweak these contours slightly and um, we can include say some major intervals of two meters and we'll add some secondary intervals in and um, possibly around 500 millimeters okay so we'll have a look at that just turn that on and if we just zoom in now to have a look at this this surface now we can see these different contours have all been applied if I want to now I can also cut any sections I want through the site so if I just open up an example section here you can see we've got a quite well defined surface along these areas of uh, varying Z value and there uh, across the horizontal now I just wanted to show that we could achieve a similar workflow using ARCHICAD 18 and the XYZ file that we exported previously so I'm just going to go to the design tab and place mesh from Surveyor's data and we'll go and find the XYZ file that we saved out and edited previously and open that up and I'm given a menu by ARCHICAD now which will give me the option to edit the units which obviously I want to be meters and I can define the import graphically or using the original location which will obviously use the coordinates of the scan so let's just define this graphically and zoom out and I'll just drop this in so we can see in 2D view there it's, it's obviously created a mesh and if I drop this into 3D view we can see that we've got a similar result to what we achieved in Revit if I just select the surface we can see that all the different points are now visible which have been used to generate the mesh we can go in and edit the different materials used to make up this mesh. I'm sure now there is a lot of other functionality available here, however not being an ARCHICAD user myself, I think the best person to speak to will be your local ARCHICAD reseller. I'll just open up the slightly more complicated surface here which is the example demolition site surface and I'll just drop this into a 3D view so we can have a look. Now there are, are a few spikes that you can see there, now that is just scan data noise that needed to be cleaned and wasn't, um, but if we zoom in a little bit and spin this around, you can see that the surface is quite well defined within ARCHICAD from that XYZ file export. I'd just like to give a quick credit to Rob Jackson at Bomb Brian Architects, who was really helpful in producing some of these ARCHICAD workflows and if you want to follow the guys they're at bombbrianbin on twitter okay thanks for watching hopefully this guide was helpful for you in the next installment we will look at producing some line work to complement these topographical surfaces